Hello everybody, welcome to Brainy Dental. This video is a tutorial on access cavity preparation of maxillary premolar. Let's go ahead and watch. This is maxillary first premolar. It has two cusps, buccal and lingual. It is bi-rooted having two roots. Its length is roughly 21.5 mm. Now this tooth is a transitional tooth between the maxillary incisors and the molars. The pulp chamber in this case is ovoid in shape. And there are two pulp pawns, one under buccal cusp and other under the lingual cusp. To make the axis cavity, mark a point at the center of the central groove, like this. Now mark another point at the center of the buccal cusp in the midpoint like this and a point in the midpoint of the lingual cusp. Now join all these three points with a line. Now the buccal border and the lingual border of the axis cavity should not extend beyond these two points. This preparation can be easily done with help of two burrs, the round burr and the tapered cylindrical burr. The point of entry, if you look at the photograph, it is at the center of the occlusal surface. This is the occlusal surface, this is the center. The burr orientation, it is perpendicular to the occlusal surface and the burr direction, it is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Position the burr perpendicular to the occlusal surface in this manner and start the cutting. I have cut through the enamel and I've made a notch. Now keeping the burr in the same position, we'll cut deeper into the dentine to reach the pulp chamber. In the next section, I will demonstrate the burr draw, which indicates entry into the pulp chamber and then how we estimate the depth of the pulp chamber. We cut through the dentine to reach the pulp chamber till we feel a burr drop like this and then we stop. With help of this endodontic explorer, we explore the pulp chamber. With help of a serrated probe, we note the depth of the pulp chamber. We take it out and place it against the tooth. Now you can observe that the location of your pulp chamber is roughly in the cervical one-third of the crown. After entering the chamber, the next important step is de-roofing the pulp chamber and then achieving a straight line access into the buccal and the lingual root canals. To de-roof the pulp chamber, I use a tapered cylindrical burr. Now the most important thing here is that while I cut, I maintain the depth of the burr. If I do not do that, I will cut deeper and cause perforation. I move the burr in the buccal and lingual direction alongside the walls of the pulp chamber so that I am able to de-roof it completely. Now with help of an endodontic explorer and then an excavator, any debris that is present is removed along with pulpal remnants or overhangs of the roof of the pulp chamber so that we can achieve a direct access into the pulp chamber. You can see this is the buccal orifice and this is the lingual orifice. I take a 15 number file and from the lingual direction I'll enter into the buccal canal achieving a straight line axis 
Similarly, taking a 20 number file from the buccal direction, I will enter into the lingual canal. So I've managed to achieve a straight line axis for both buccal and lingual canals. The buccal and the lingual root canal orifices are positioned in such a manner that in order to enter into the buccal orifice, we have to position our file against the lingual cusp in this manner and then in a diagonal direction, we enter into the root canal orifice of the buccal canal. Similarly, for the lingual to enter to the lingual orifice, we position our file against the buccal cusp and then in a diagonal manner enter into the lingual root canal. I hope you followed this. Well, if you closely follow all the steps described in this tutorial, you'll be easily able to make an oval shaped axis cavity and locate your buccal and lingual orifices. I hope you enjoyed your lecture. Do subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. Thank you.